Sherry Shaw, and Sister Carlina Johnson. May you be blessed with many more years of happiness. Fellowship dinner will be held immediately following today's divine service. Please stay and enjoy the food and fellowship. Spirit and Truth Ministries will be hosting their annual fall conference September 29th through October 1st in Alexandria, Louisiana. That is Friday through Sunday. More information will be available soon. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. So let us bring our tithes and offerings to our God with gladness and thanksgiving so there may be meat in his house. The tithes and offerings box is located right at the entrance of the sanctuary. Remember, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., the church members gather together on the conference line for prayer and testimony. We welcome all to participate. The Wednesday night Bible study begins at 6.30 p.m. on our conference line. Remember to tell your friends and family that Remnant Seed Ministries Divine Services stream live on our website every week at 12.05 p.m. So, if they can't make it to the building, they have the opportunity to hear God's Word live on their computers, smart TVs, or any of their mobile devices. And if you want to share with them a past message, all of our services are available on our YouTube page. After the benediction, remember to please exit the sanctuary portion of the building and enjoy fellowship in the entryway or the fellowship hall, so those who wish to quietly meditate in prayer may do so. We pray that God will continue to bless you and yours throughout the remainder of the day. All right, if we could stand for our song of meditation. It is found on page 81. And we're going to try to sing all three verses. Come thou fount of every blessing. I love that song. It describes me perfectly. 
See, Jesus sought me when I was a stranger, wandering from the, Lord, from the throne of God. He didn't wait on me to find him. He found me. Amen. And I have a tendency to wander. But he held on to me. So we just thank the Lord for that. It wasn't us that were so righteous that we earned his love. It was his love that bought us this opportunity. So we want to thank God this morning. Amen? Amen. Well, welcome. Uh, happy Sabbath, everybody. Welcome this afternoon to uh, another opportunity to hear what the Lord has to say to us. Uh, we want to thank those who are joining us on the conference line, those who are joining us on the live broadcast, and those who will be watching at some point in the future. We want to say welcome to Remnant Seed Ministries here in Memphis. And uh, as always, we begin the service with a word of prayer, for we have only one teacher uh, that we can listen to, and that is his spirit. So let us pray to our Father that he would grant us his Holy Spirit. So let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity. And we ask for the Comforter to come, the one you have instructed to teach us the good and the right way, that we may understand your truth. We ask a blessing upon those who are searching for the same truth. Lord, all over this world, that you would gather them, Lord, that you would speak to them. Lord, use your ministers. Give them the voice that comes from above, that they may speak with the authority of heaven. Lord, that your people may hear and obey. Protect those, Lord, who are in very dangerous waters now, trying to teach your word in some places that it's against the law. We ask that you give them power, but also give them a shield of protection. And Father, please forgive us for the sins we've committed against you. And in the name of Christ, we ask all things. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Those are not just words. It is our reality. We are so happy to have a God that could look through the annals of time and know what kind of knuckleheads we were all going to be. And he would give us such a day, a day to regroup. He said, I, I, I didn't make man for the Sabbath. I made Sabbath for man because they need a Sabbath. And we thank God for it. Amen? We thank God for all of you all. It's good to see faces, friendly faces here, uh, though sometimes we miss when they're not here. Well, we miss people, all, everybody, when they're not here. But we're glad to see everybody's uh, come home today. We want to turn our Bibles, if you would, to the book of 2 Timothy. See, we live in a world of what is termed practiced sin. It's not just sin. Sin is being practiced. And, 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 and the, the, the culture of evil has spread to every corner of the world, and that is not by happenstance. That is not by accident. See, the enemy has set out to change people's perspective on what is right and what is wrong. Right. It's as, this is a, a direct attack on the definitions of these words. And, and, and he wants to, he substituted it, even the very laws of God, he is trying to substitute those laws. See, those laws of God quite as has kept, kept society together. The structures of families, the structures of community, the structures of those things really kept this thing together. But now the enemy of souls has copycatted in a way, or I should say substituted in a way. See, in the book of Daniel, you know, it tells us about the goal of Satan was to change times and laws. And this is what he's trying to do, and this is what he has succeeded in doing. He has not changed God's times and laws. He's just changed the perspective that we have on God's laws and times. But, uh, see, this one, this one world system has done just that. And it's become Babylon all over again. But in 2 Timothy 3... It teaches us something. It's not going to get better. And I hope you are all right with that. Because 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13 teaches us that Babylon is fallen, but this is not going to get better until the second coming of our Messiah. 
2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13 says, But evil men and seducers shall wax, what? Worse. Worse. And worse. Deceiving and being deceived. This is the future of mankind. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Wicked men are going to grow stronger and stronger by deception, and even in their deception, it's going to spread like wildfire all over the world. God promises that. But if God told us that, you know he gave us a solution. He, you know he did that. He said, this is all going to burn, but you're not going to have to burn with it. But before this happens, it's going to get pretty bad. And this one world system is pretty bad. You know, if God took his total hand off of this, you wouldn't be here today. Because it'd be against the law. Because if you have read this, uh, uh, the culture that they're trying to establish, you would say, oh, no, Lord, it's, what's going to happen to us? Well, you know what's going to happen to you. In the world, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, because I've overcome the world. And so, but 2 Timothy tells us, you know what, it's going to get pretty tough. But we got to get tough with it. And we got to get close to our Father. See, the whole world has fallen under the spell of Satan. Yes, this is spiritual. I know we're, you know, we're looking at the, at the CNNs and, the, and, and listening at the podcasts and all that. And we really think it's governments. We think it's financial institutions. We think it's World Health Organizations. We, we think it's, it's, it's your Congress or your, your governors. It's not. This is a devil-inspired system. Revelation teaches us that the dragon gave him his power, his seat and great authority. So it's the dragon that's causing all this to happen. And who is the dragon? The devil. See, this thing is spiritual. And it happens to be played out in the physical environment. It is the spirit of the Antichrist that has everybody spellbound. You ever wonder why people just look lost? And, and, you, and they don't understand anything? They have no ear for the truth. And we wonder why. Because they're under a spell. I know most people nowadays, you know, especially those that find themselves in churches, don't believe in witchcraft. I hate to tell you it's real. Because it's in the Bible. It's real. And it's being practiced through the media. Do you know that spells are being cast all the time? And it's, it's quite incredible because when, you, when you, you're familiar with what witchcraft looks like, you see it everywhere. But they didn't want you to know what it looked like. They, didn't, they, they wanted to, they had to be hidden. They used to have to do subliminal messages in movies. Now it's not subliminal. It's in your face. Now poor little babies are getting exposed to this at the age of two. You know, when, when I, I, I got nervous about 20 years ago when they came out with a baby channel on satellite television. And I watched a little bit of it. My boys were a little older, so they didn't really get that. Um, but uh, I watched the colors. I watched the flashes. I watched the you know, it was just cute little bunnies and all that. But I watched the, the patterns. These are hypnotic patterns. Mm -hmm. And that's why the two-year-old is like this. The house could be burning down. And he ain't moving. Mm -hmm. They stuck. And I said, wow, this thing is a spell. They're casting spells on our children. Now the children are 20 years older. Now these are the people who are in either in school or in trade or doing news. These people are just lost because they've been under a spell. We're under a spell. When we don't know how to look and see what was going on, we find ourselves captivated as well. See, the delusions that we live under have developed a mindset that is designed to keep us away from the Most High. Don't forget that. Everything Satan does is for one purpose, that we will be removed from the presence of the Almighty God. And if you believe that, if you don't believe that, watch everything they do. Anything but Christ. They will allow you to worship anything but the Messiah. Emmanuel, you better not say it. If you say Jesus, Yahshua, Yah, whatever you say, don't say that. <laughs> you can say Buddha, Betty, whoever else you, these people worshiping. 
You can, at, at, at the office, you can. You know, the only religion being, being persecuted at your office is true Christianity. You can say anything. You can have a Satan club after work, and they'll give you the cafeteria to do it. But, oh, don't you say anything about the creator. No, no, you can't, do, can't say that. Nope, that's going to influence people, and you, you're pushing your religion. You walk, in the, you walk into your office these days and say, good morning, Isaiah. You say, how you doing? God is good. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't push your religion on me. Just because you said the truth, God is good. But that's the illusion that we're living under. That's the spell that we're living under. So if you go to the book of Isaiah, we're going to see a little bit more about this. See, the mindset it has been developed to design to keep us away. See, he said in Isaiah chapter 5, this is the mindset that we're living under. And I know that we're not supposed to be of the world, but we're in the world. And so you could act like this ain't real. You know, we can lock ourselves up in our holy little closets and act like we don't have to deal with this. But let me tell you something. This is the reality, the Babylon that you live, currently live in. And it's going to get worse. And if you do not know how to avoid the consequence or the judgment that is coming on this Babylon, you're going to be caught in this Babylon. Amen. So in, in, in when Isaiah 5, in verse 20, there's a, there's a judgment being pronounced here. And this is the reality that we're living in. He said, whoa. When God says, whoa, that's a judgment. That means don't do that because it's going to be bad. He said, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Is this not the environment you live in? That's right. That's right. Yep. That's it, yeah. Then he goes on to say that put darkness for light and light for darkness. It is, it is, it is terrible. Deception is gone, run rampant. We are so deceived. And I watch them. And, I, and, I, and I, I, we, we, we see the development of this spirit. It is running rampant. Then it goes on and says, they call bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Then he said, woe unto them that are what? Wow. Here is what we really need to focus on. Wow. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. You ever been driving down the street lately? People are what? Wise in their own eyes. They make right turns from the third left lane. And that's just how it's going to be. Why? Because it's all about me. You're living in a world of selfishness. Everyone is so ca caught up with who they are. It's all about me. They're a bunch of spoiled little two-year-olds. Mm -hmm. See, this has become the norm. And this is the spirit of the enemy. Selfishness is the spirit of the devil. Always. When you think you're the center of the universe, you will have a Luciferian spirit. It's getting quiet early. <laughs> Everyone wants to do their own thing. In the 70s, we, there was a song. Do your, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. Y'all remember that? It's your thing. It has never been your thing. It's either God's thing or it's the devil's thing. But they want us to believe it's our own thing. Right? And, and also, what the devil has been teaching is... Everyone has their own truth. Yes. Be, uh, because, you know, uh, 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 the devil has told you that your truth, what you believe, is your, is your reality. Right. And it's important to understand this is not just in the world. Right. This is in the church. Right. Is it the most important? See, what you have become is the most important thing in your life. He has convinced people that they are gods. And what they feel is real. The devil has tricked us into understanding, or being deceived, I should say, in saying what, what my feeling is, is truth. 
the worst thing you could be is have your feelings. Your feelings are leading you down the path of unrighteousness. How do you feel? Feeling is what you do? Is that, that's, that's how we make decisions now? I feel that we, I don't, don't want you to feel nothing. What is the truth? What is the good and the right way? But you have an entire world who feels their way into their truth. Help us, Lord. Jeremiah 44, you know our, our dear ancestors gave us an example of how that works out. Let's go to 44th chapter of Jeremiah. See, he has convinced people that we are really gods. Why we call them gods is this. We start worshiping ourselves. We have become our own idol. That's the problem. That's a big problem. Because when you become God, who do you call? <laughs> They're going to lock you up in the nut house because you be calling yourself. Right. Oh, self, what should I do? Well, I think you ought to do. <laughs> Jeremiah 44 teaches us that this is not a good idea. By making ourselves our own gods, by, by teaching us, uh, I mean, he, the devil has taught us how to be consumed about our own, our own righteousness, our own right, not righteousness, try to be consumed by our rights. We have a right to be this. We want, you can't tell me what I can't do. Well, what held society together was even this, this wicked nation we live in, it had some fundamental principles they got from the word of God. And those were the things that were holding this thing together. Amen. But now those things have been destroyed. We thought it was a light thing when they took prayer out of school. It was oftentimes that was the only time somebody would hear a prayer because their homes weren't right. We thought it was a light thing when we began to, to, to uh, compromise God's word. When we started saying, it's all right, don't worry about it. God understands. We thought that was a light thing. But that was the thing that was holding it together. Do you know if the families don't exist? Now, I want you to look at this. Thank you, Father. The whole agenda of this, this push is to destroy the family. If you really want to know what these new movements are about, it's about the destruction of the family and the destruction of a belief in a one God. I know it might come out differently. They might think it's the Patriot Act, or you might think it was, you know, the, uh, the tetanus shots or whatever it is. You might, that's how it's played out. Right. But the, the mission of Satan right. is to destroy the fundamental principles of the Father. How? I mean, think about the, the movements. Yep. You got a movement that cannot reproduce. Right. Very true. So what do you do? You grab the children. Yep. But when you think, even logically, Brother Nice, this doesn't make sense. Because eventually you're going to run out of people. If you don't reproduce, you're going to run out of people. Yep. You won't be able to recruit People, because you have stopped making people, because your truth is what it is. I want to be this. You feel like I, it's, but this is the world. This is the world. I, would, I was thinking they would wait until people our age died, because this is never going to make sense to us. But, but, but they said we can't wait because there's too much truth leaking out. We got to stomp this down right quick. See, there's some reality coming in. There, it's a spirit of God trying to move through a people. And it's scaring the devil to death. That's why he's trying to get this thing out here. Let's got to control it because, oh, no, people are waking up. He overplayed his hand. He thought everybody was, was nuts. He figured I got them. I trained them in my schools. I took them to my hospitals. I controlled their foods. But God says, I'm still God. And I will be victorious. And I will have a people. And this is why you're here today. But let's look at what, what happened in Jeremiah 44 and 17. These people had determined that they are gods. He said, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth 
out of what? Our own mouth. Don't tell me anything about thus saith the Lord. It's thus saith me. They're saying thus saith me. Then it goes on. He said, uh, out of our own mouth, to burn. Then he said, this is how we're going to do it, because we feel that this is something we want to do. They decided to burn incense unto the queen of heaven, idol, and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. See, they had figured uh, that what they wanted to do was righteous because it served them. This is not a serving them type of relationship. It is a worshiping and serving the one who is responsible for your very being. Not the queen of heaven. And then it says, then, then they went out and said, look, we've always done this. Our fathers have always done this. And so therefore, it must be right. Longevity doesn't make it a truth. You can be wrong for a very long time. Offering unto, and said, then, and we have done, he said, we and our fathers, our kings and our princesses in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then we had plenty of what? Victuals, or vittles as they call down south, and were well and saw no evil. They called evil good and good evil. When you began to make, God, make yourself a God, you will start thinking in this pattern. No, I won't. No, I won't. Yes, you will. Because you'll get further and further from the source of the power that's keeping you from being this. See, God has, has pronounced a woe upon this Babylon that we live in. But we've got to ask ourselves something. Have we succumbed to this system? Are we practicing witchcraft? Every time we have another idol, or an idol, I should say, that we worship more than the Most High, we're practicing witchcraft. See, this witchcraft that the world is presenting, and it's presenting witchcraft on every possible media outlet. It's witchcraft, y'all. It's spell bounding. When you are under a spell, you're bound by this spell. See, just because we people who call ourselves children of God, uh, just because we say we don't believe that doesn't mean it's not true. You are the ones that it's going to be so easy to spell bound because you deny the scripture. We're walking around here unprotected. You better seal up your homes, people. You know, when people move into a new house, especially in here, we, we, we go by the house with anointing oil right. to seal the house. It's serious, y'all. You got you to protect that house. That, 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 that spirit must, your, your the spirit of God must be in that house because every other spirit is trying to get in. We got to seal this up, y'all. Because our children are too precious to let them be just out and about being spellbound. This generation is so lost because no one protected them. And they're looking and being taught every day how to practice witchcraft. It is amazing. We don't see it. Until, uh, now, now it's getting a little more plain because it's getting really interesting now because, you know, the, these, these uh, uh, musicians, these, these, these people, the, it's really crazy that you would see somebody dress up like the devil. Yeah. And, and, you know, back then you couldn't do that. Yeah. I mean, even Parliament didn't do that, and they were nutty. Uh, <laughs> right. the, and you have, the, you have a, a, a actual ritual being played out before you on these television shows and in these concerts. Some of these, these particular artists are telling you in their concerts, you are worshiping the devil. 
Isn't that weird? Now, one or two people run out. Because they had didn't they they were just so oblivious, they were just living life and oh this is good music. Oh yeah, I know he's talking about you know doing this, but you know, God, he's all right. But when you say that to some southern people, I don't know about north, you hear you say, You worship the devil, uh, I gotta go. <laughs> right and it's really interesting because you see this on like uh, on Instagram or TikTok, yeah. that lady, oh, <laughs> I just heard, so I got to go. And, you know, she dressed up looking like she, you know, she danced at the club, but, but she, she had enough sense. God, God had put something in her that said, this is not a good idea to be around 10,000 people who are practicing witchcraft. What are we going to do, y'all? It's time to seal this thing up. See, we, we replaced... <laughs> Oh, Lord, help us. We got, how did we get here? You know how we got here? We became wise in our own eyes. We have substituted the word of God with our own words. We have replaced the way of God with our own way. And, and have we become our idol? Have we become our God? See, the word of God tells us that's not the way to go. See, because you don't become you, you become it. You become full of the demons you attract, you attract to yourselves. Some people don't go to movies. Some people don't watch television. Some people don't play, uh, what's this? Video games. Thanks, I... I knew if I did this, somebody would tell me. But we are doing something. Every time we walk into a store, there's an opportunity for a spell. We see it, especially in the health food store. Because you know that, that practicing witches are very concerned about health, unlike practicing Christians. Yes, I said practicing. So when we walk into stores, we notice who they are. And when I was a little younger, I would enjoy that because I would have fun with it. Because they see you and you see them. And you don't back down. Uh, especially around the, the sacred days. Uh, 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 the, the, uh, the, of course, the great, the great uh, Halloween and the sacred days of, of uh, the, uh, the, the winter solstice. They really into this thing, man. And they'll let you know they're not shamed. We're the only ones that won't stand. But when you, you got to know that you're walking in the midst of Babylon, and Babylon worships another god, so you need to be on your job to worship the god that created, created the heaven and the earth. But it does tell us not to trust in ourselves. Go to Psalms 146. He said, because trusting in yourself is a losing proposition. And then, and then he goes on to say, in, in Psalms 146 and verse 3, we're going to stay here for a minute. He tells us, put not your trust in princes. So stop trusting the government. I hope you, I mean, if you still trust the government, I, I don't know. Maybe you need to go back to elementary school. And, you know, he put, don't trust in princes, nor in the son of man. Now, the son of man here is not Christ. He's talking about men or mankind. Amen? In whom there is no help. You wonder why you disappointed all the time. Because he told you there's no help in trusting in these people. Then he goes on to say, His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, and in that very day even his thoughts perish. So why are you going to trust in something that's no better than you? We need to trust in something greater than ourselves. And, and when we do that, we stop looking for answers in strange places. We look for answers where the answers have been given to us for thousands and thousands of years. See, we not, might not be conscious of the fact that we are practicing this madness. We might not. We might be so busy that we don't know that's what we're doing. Ask yourself what you think about the most. If you want to know what you're worshiping, 
Ask what you think about the most. Ask what you talk about the most. Okay? And, 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 and ask what you're focused on the most. That is what your w idol is. And most of the time, it is you. I'm focusing on me. I, I, or, or whatever I'm trying to do, is, it's all consuming to me. When you are consumed by that, there's a problem because you forgot to worship the true and the living God. You are worshiping something else. Ask yourself where your treasure is, and then you will be able to answer that question. Who is your God? Now, we're not saying that you don't have responsibilities, you don't have things that are going on on this earth. That is all true. And isn't it a good thing to have something to do? You do. But if you are, everything that comes out of your mouth is something besides God, that is your idol. If we, as a people, do not put forth what's called a concerted, consistent effort, we're going to be swept away with the flood of evil men. See, you can't maintain neutrality now. You got to put forth an effort to resist this. Yes. It used to be, you, know, you can hide and they're not, they're not going to see me. So. Oh, guess what? The devil is pushing you right in the ring. What you going to do? Abednego, what you going to do? What are you going to do, Daniel? See, we've been hiding in our Christianity. Oh, the devil said, oh, no, you're not going to hide no more. Come on out here and tell me if you're real or not. Oh, when they, when they, when they, when they, when they uh, tie everybody in to a system, you're going to find out who you are. You're going to find out what you believe. See, God has been telling us this for years. It's here now. So, you know, we can't hide, oh, well, I, I, this is too much for me. Yeah, it might be too much for you, but it's not too much with God. And so what you have to do is go ahead and solidify this relationship with him, the only one that's going to get us through this. Amen. I'm not telling anybody to concentrate on the foolishness of this madness. Don't do that. It's overwhelming. Concentrate on your relationship with the Lord. Focus on that. Stop being your own God and start having him to be the God of your life. And that way, when the devil is, whatever Babylon is doing, it really won't matter. You're like, Lord, you told me Babylon had fallen, had fallen, has become the habitation of every foul spirit and every hatred bird. You told me that, and you were so right. <laughs> Everywhere you go is a hateful bird and a foul spirit was in a, in a place the other day. This lady had such a foul spirit, and she was the receptionist. She's supposed to be the one greeting the people. Just a foul spirit. And you know what? And that's because she's being beat up by the, the enemy. That's all. She could have been once a nice person, but the enemy has worn her out. And so what are we supposed to do? Shine a light into that dark place. Not tell her, you being rude. You need to get your... Si no. We should shine a light. We should be an ear. Sometimes people just need to say something. I, 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 what, you all right today? An hour later, you find out why she had a bad attitude. Because she just, I, I got to tell somebody. My life is falling apart. I don't know that. I, and you just, did, look, Jesus did. Jesus just listened. And he would drop something, drop something. See, there's a lot of people in Babylon that's not Babylonians. Okay, that was too deep. There's a, there's a lot of people who don't want to be prisoners to Satan any longer. There's some people who want to be made free. They just don't know how. And we as a people just look like we don't know how because we have drifted ourselves back into Babylon. Sometimes we, we think we... we we, I think we begin to think and act in the way of Babylonians. Because we'll call evil good and good evil in a minute. Because what we want to do is automatically good. Because we want to do it. We want to do it, so therefore God is going to stamp his, his, his stamp of approval on us, because it's us. We're his people. 
Therefore, what we do is righteous. God said, that ain't never been the case. My people have always been not righteous <laughs> until they give their heart to me. We are so wrapped up in giving our heart to everything else but God. And I'm talking about, I give my heart to my spouse. I give my heart to my children. You need to give your heart to God so you know what a spouse and a child need to be. Amen. I love my children, but I will not submit to the will of God. Really? How do you know how to love your children then? You like them a lot. And you spoil them. Spoiled children make spoiled and very dangerous adults. Spoiled children break into stores because they want it. And I've been always given what I want. They won't give it to me, I'll take it. And now some states have laws that you can't, take, you can't stop somebody from stealing from your store. I bet, it, I bet you can't do that in certain areas. I know some corner stores that got more guns behind the counter. Coming in and try to steal some baloney. <laughs> You're going to leave with a hole in you. But the system says, let them alone. Don't stop them. They have a right. I, could, I probably could solve crime in about 20 minutes. Well, no, I can't solve it. It will take 40 years to fix it. But it has to start here. See, if you don't start fighting crime at home, we don't, there's not enough policemen in America. You can't legislate righteousness. See, the law was made for the unrighteous. And so therefore, all the laws you pass are for the unrighteous people. Your problem is you got too many unrighteous people. Because you didn't take care of the house. You did not establish a relationship in your home that with a spirit that can keep you from falling. Hmm. You remember when, uh, when, you were, uh, when we as a people were kind of open to the Lord, uh, the Lord's counsel? You remember those days? You know, when you first met the Lord, oh, I just want to learn more. I want to know what he wants me to do. <laughs> when, how long ago was that? See, we were open to counsel at one point, even when it went against what we wanted to do. Not anymore. We're, we're on, we're on a, our own God. Do you remember when, when you were open to the adjustments that the Lord was so kind to give you in the plan that you're trying to work out? God says, that, that, yeah, you sure are doing that, but let me make an adjustment. Not now. God, I'll get back with you when I finish this project. Do you remember when you, you, you were not your own God? Do you remember when, when you believed that your plans were not infallible? See, we'll do that. We got plans, and we know they're righteous. We know it. Why? Because it's our plan, and that means we're righteous, so everything that comes from us is righteous. This is so ridiculous. Nowhere in the history of mankind has that ever been true, but the devil has deceived us and told us that's it. It's good to have a plan. He said, yeah, uh, uh, write, the, uh, write the vision, make it plain on tables, and a man builds a house. You know, he needs to first figure this thing out, and so he'll know what to do, and so he won't get in the middle of the plan and, and won't have enough. Or, you know, he said, that's a good thing, but let me adjust that. Because you made it with maybe 10% of him and 90% of you. And the great father in heaven says, okay, you're going out. Now, let's make that adjustment. Well, no. And the reason why you don't want to is because it will, it will make you believe that you're not infallible. That you made a mistake. Adjustments in a plan is not admitting you made a mistake it's something coming at you that can make your plan better it's like a husband and a wife so a lot of brothers i know i had to learn this lesson a lot of brothers resist conversations with the wife because she's not trying to to crush you she's trying to let you see something 
that an adjustment might need to be made because she's standing here looking at what you're looking at and you're standing here. You don't see that side. She does and she loves you enough to say, hey, consider this side over here, some stuff going on. Make an adjustment. Our God does the same thing with us when we used to listen to him. Go to Psalms 146. And you know what? When you were in that mindset that you didn't mind being corrected, when you didn't mind being led, you were very happy. You were very happy. Let's look at the fifth verse of 146 of Psalm. It starts out saying what? Happy is he that have the God of Jacob for his help. Who is the God of Jacob? The Most High, the Ancient of Days, the Great I Am. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of other names that you can name, but he holds that position. There's only one of him. Everything else is under him. And I, he's a him, okay? <laughs> he said, which made, verse 6, heaven and earth, the sea, and all therein is, which keepeth truth forever. See, happy is he that has his faith and trust in this one. Do we have our faith and trust in him? Then he goes on to say in verse 7, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. See, I'm trying to figure out why we choosing ourselves as God and not choosing this one. Can you do any of these things? The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the stranger. He relieved the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. If you ever want to know sometimes why your world seems to be out of order, that's because God has turned that upside down. We talked about this, I think it was yesterday morning. Uh, in the book of Job, it talks about God will use, or it will pr oppress you to open up your ear. He uses that to open up your ear. Why? Because you have stopped listening to him. God lovingly oppresses you. That sounds strange, but it's true. And you're like, why is this happening to me? Open up your ear. He's trying to show something to you. He's trying to teach you. And we're too busy being our own God, fulfilling our own lust. We're fulfilling our own dreams. And no, we're too busy. He said, okay, watch this. Stop. I don't have, what, what, what happened? He said, that's the only way I can get your attention. I'll put you in a dungeon to get your attention. I'll lock you in prison to get your attention because I'm trying to save you. I don't want God to have to do that to me. <laughs> I want my ears open all the time. I don't want to be oppressed. I just want to listen. And listening is not just hearing, it's practicing what has been said. Verse 10 says, The Lord shall reign forever, even the God of Zion, O Zion, unto all generation. Praise ye the Lord. Don't praise yourself. Stop praising and having faith in, in the system that has been placed by Satan uh, that's supposed to crush you and keep you away from the living God. See, it, it's the creator's way that will sustain, uh, sustain us through all of this madness. It's his word. It's his way. It's going to sustain us, y'all. I want y'all to know to have some faith this morning. It's going to get crazy. He said worse and worse, didn't it? But he said, I'm still your God. I'm still your father. I'm still your protector. I'm still your buckler. I'm still your strength. I'm still your wisdom. I'm still your understanding. It doesn't matter what anything does because I can say no and the whole thing can fall apart. And I'd love to see when he does that too. You know, the plans, 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 and they're about to hit the button. He said no. And all the, see, in the real world, in the spiritual world, all the demons flee. And the, and, the, and the humans, I get confused. 
They don't, it, it, almost like a, 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 a guy the other day, the, the, the senator, who, who was like struck dumb, was talking about to say something, and, well, something happened. It was kind of interesting, too, how it happened. You know, when somebody can do that to you and all of a sudden you struck numb, that's a spiritual activity. See, but God is greater even than that. He's greater than that. He can tell the whole world to stand down because my people, he said, he told the devil that I'm still in charge. In Revelation, he talks about, he told the angels, hold the four winds until I can seal my people. See, when you get sealed, stop worrying about things. He said, I'm, 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 until I seal my, seal my people, because my people will get caught up in what's coming. When it gets tough, you're going to find out who you are and what you really believe. And God has been trying to prepare us for this time for a very long time, and we've been too busy. I'm going to tell you all something. It's going to be a time where you will not be able to prepare. And if you have not been listening to him, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. See, it is his love, y'all, his counsel, his power that are going to make us victorious. He asked us to be consistent he asked us to be faithful. He asked us to be obedient to his loving law. You know, he told Joshua to keep his mind on him, and he would find a good success. But let's go to Psalms chapter 1. This is what we need to be doing now. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man. Isn't that what we're always asking for? Blessings. Lord, bless me. He said, blessed is the man that does what? That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. He said, oh, that should be like, oh, that's all I got to do. Leave the counsel of the ungodly and being me chief, stop listening to my own counsel. Is that all right? And he said, nor standeth in the way of sinners. So stop practicing the way of those who don't believe in the Most High. Right. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Why are you going to be positioned in a place that all they do is ridicule? All they do is tear down your faith? He said, but look, but his delight, that's us. His is the pronoun for us. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, doth he what? Meditate. meditate day and night. You want to be blessed, meditate on his law day and night. And I don't mean standing there and get you some candles and some incense and say, I'm in, I'm, 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 no, no. Meditate, think about, put into practice, make it the way of life. He said, blessed are you. You want to get blessed, do that. You stop asking God for blessings. When he told you, here's how you get it. Lord, bring me a sandwich. I told you where to go. <laughs> Lord, I need this. Go over here. Lord, I need this. Go over here. Lord, I need... Would you stop talking to me, Lord? I'm trying to get ask you to... All right. All right. Turn to Matthew, because this is getting too heavy. Let's go to Matthew. See, Christ gave his disciples the formula. <laughs> a formula that we can even use today. He said, uh, for us to survive the madness. It, it, it's a very simple formula. It really only has two words, no, three words. So let's turn to Matthew 26 and begin at verse 40. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane about to get ready for what he had to go through. He kept listening for his father. His ears were always open. Even at the time when he was his weakest, his ears were open. Because what did he ask his father? Father, uh, is it anything else we can do? And God was silent on that. <laughs> he said, this is what we got to do. 
And he said, hey, your will be done. But he always had his ear open. See, Abraham had his ear open on Mount Moriah. What happened if Abraham had stopped listening? Isaac would have been killed. But when your ear is open, the plan was this close. He had it in his hand. Isaac laid on the altar. If Abraham couldn't hear God because he was overwhelmed with the circumstance. When he, wa- he wasn't overwhelmed, he kept listening. And an angel said, Abram, Abraham. Yes. Get that ram over there. That's, it's so important to have that ear open, y'all. But Matthew 26 and verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and, and findeth them asleep. Wow. Is that our testimony? Christ comes to us and he finds us asleep and saith then unto Peter, what could you not watch with me one hour? Are we so busy? Are we so tired that we can't watch for one hour? But we can binge watch something on Netflix. One more, one more season, one more show. Then he goes on to say, here's the formula. He said, Peter, watch and pray. That's the formula. Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. See, watch and pray. Don't pray to not enter in temptation. Watch and pray so you can spot that temptation. That you, you'll know how to overcome that temptation. God's not going to take you out of the storm. He's going to teach you how to, how, to, how to exist inside the storm. He'll give you that strength and that wisdom. But if you got to watch and pray. See, when you start watching like God sees things, you'll see Satan's plan a mile off. But if you're not watching because you're not praying, we're going to be in a world of hurt. He said, then he said, yeah, the spirit indeed is willing. But the flesh is weak. He said, watch and pray, y'all. Use the law of God as your eyeglasses. When you want to look at something, when you want to make a decision, look it through the eyes of God. They say, oh, Lord, the word said this. Well, that's what it is. Okay? No, don't try to adjust, you know. Well, I know the word says maybe I I didn't interpret that right. Right. See, me, me, I will go and say, Lord, what is this? Jesus wept. What is this? Oh, that's just, that's just two words. That's just one verse. You, know, you don't have to ask God. Yeah, you better ask God what that meant. Because you'll go your whole life and not know what that was about. Just like you say, remember Lot's wife. That's three words. And you didn't ask God what that meant. You just took it like he dropped it and he, he dropped the mic. That's the problem with Genesis 6. People read it. Oh, God just said something. He left it alone. You better ask him. What all this is about. And that's why he said, watch and pray. He said, when you pray, God will give you the vision. He'll give you the sight. He'll let you know who your enemy is. Anybody got enemies at the office? When you have enemies at the office, this is when your Christianity will shine the brightest. Because you will not give in to that. You will not respond that way. They'll come at you and lie on you. They come at you and, and yell at you, try to embarrass you. Yes, but you keep that character that God gave you, and that light will overwhelm that darkness. Isn't that wonderful? Now, that person might not change, but somebody's watching you. Be a true child of God. That's watch and pray. See, you can see it coming. You can see it coming. Now, use the law of God to look through everything, to look at everything. Don't use your own understanding to determine what you see. He said, ask for the spirit of discernment as we go through our daily lives and, and be open to taking counsel from God and God's true ministers. 
I want you to, had to put that in. He told me to put that in there because some people say, I don't need to hear from nobody. God speaks to me. <laughs> and you, no, I don't, need to, I don't need to go to church. I'm spiritual. You are spiritual. You spiritual, all right. Because you're talking against the pattern of God. God said, come now together. Don't forsake. Because fellowship is extremely important. Why did the disciples go and establish assemblies all over the known world if it wasn't important to have an assembly? Some, some of the assemblies were in the houses. But it wasn't one person in the house having a church. Right. <laughs> I'm going to stay home and I'm going to read my Bible and that's my church. Oh. You can't be a Christian by yourself because you don't know if you're real or not. Now you go being your own God. I'm righteous. And you look around, you have no, no way to practice righteousness. I'll tell you this, you come to this assembly, you're going to have to be a Christian. Because there's so many diverse types of personalities in this room. There would be no way you would know each other if it wasn't for this assembly. We don't run in the same circles. We don't know the same people, do we? But God says, assemble, because you're going to have to learn how to deal with people not like you. Amen. And people who don't like you. See, that, that's my job. I deal with people who don't like me. Somewhere, at some time, if you stand in this place, there's a time where you're not going to like me. And it's really funny because I can see it. <laughs> and he already told me what was going to happen. And so I just can't stand it, Pastor. There's a scripture that says, don't look at their eyes. Their faces. It's, it, it's quite interesting. But, but you got a fellowship. And you got to look at everything, the decision that you make through what God has set up. And God did set up assemblies. You are a church, but you got to be in an assembly of believers. And so just keep that in mind. Because if you ask for God's help, you got to do it God's way. You remember 1 Thessalonians 5.17? It was one of uh, Jace's memory verses for a while. It was pray without ceasing. See, we need to be in constant contact with our Father through his spirit. And when we do that, he, you can have your ear open. He can tell you before something happens what's going to happen. And then in the midst of the madness, he can whisper to you and say, go this way. Go that way. Don't, when, when, you know, when, he would, God, when Christ was in front of Pontius Pilate, do you know what he was doing? He was listening for instructions from above. Because some questions he didn't say anything about, did he? Until Pilate made, it, made a statement that this wasn't true. Don't you know I have the power? He, oh, 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 bro. You just stepped out of line now. You don't have that kind of power, bro. But a lot of, uh, he was standing before the Sanhedrin. He didn't say anything. Why? He was listening for what to say, and the Father didn't tell him anything, and he didn't take it upon himself, being the creator, to say, I'm going to say something because I'm who I am. No, he was listening. And if Christ can have that discipline, shouldn't we? Go to First Peter, if you would. Because this is the only way we're going to make it, y'all. This is the only way a child of God, a child of the Most High, can find true success is to meditate and listen. See, we're going to find peace in troublous times. He already told us it's going to be troublous. Anybody notice we got troublous times? Has the devil been coming at you? I mean, blow after blow after blow. But you keep getting up. You keep persevering. There's a spirit of God in you that says, I will not quit. I know this will pass. I know there's something on the other side of this. Is that true? Amen. Some people are laid in the dust because they didn't have that spirit. He's coming. The devil is coming at everybody. 
But you know what? No, let me take that back. The devil is coming at those who don't want to go with him. Everybody else is on the, on the, on the truck. We going to Devilville. This is great. But those who are trying to walk the way, the devil will send his agent to you. It might be somebody at your job. Man, this, this person over here is trying to do what's right, trying to be kind, trying to do the job. To, and I'm going to send a, one of my agents in here and see if what, what they're all about. It's so sad to see the devil try. Only when you fast and pray, only when you pray without ceasing, only when you believe that it gets to be entertaining. It can be, it can be frightening if you don't have him. 1 Peter 1, verse 13. He gives us some understanding here. He says, Wherefore, gird up thy loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of who? At the revelation. See, this is where your peace comes from. When you start to understand this, he said, this grace is extended until you get to the point where you can understand what this is. He said, the grace will be extended until you have the opportunity to hear what I have to tell you. When you refuse that, grace might leave you. Then he goes on to say, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. See, after the revelation comes, you're not ignorant any longer. Yes, you still have the opportunity to not go with God. Yes. But you're not ignorant anymore. Then he goes on to say, he, wants, he doesn't want us to go back to when we were ignorant and the things that we practiced when we were ignorant. He wants us to practice the things that we have now learned. And that's what's so important about church. You're supposed to be taught things, not entertained. It's all right to have great music. I mean, really, music is fantastic. It's a wonderful tool that God created for worship. Yes. But if you're going for the worship service called singing, unless you catch something out of the song, you need to be taught what to do. We all need to be taught. It's not entertaining to find out that you might be not right. You wonder why a lot of people don't come. No one wants to be told by him that they're not doing what they should be doing. But you know what? You can hide from that reality all you want to. It's still a reality. Help us, Lord. Hmm. He said, I want you to be obedient children. Verse 15, but as he which hath called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation or conduct. Then it goes on to say, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And I want you to understand one of the most important aspects of being holy is being morally pure. That's a little different definition, but that's actually what this word means, to be morally pure. We talked this morning about the heart. The heart will make the outside pure. But when the heart is wicked, it doesn't matter. The outside, I don't care. You can put on all the stuff you want to put on. You can say all the words that, that look righteous. But, but to the blind, it will fool them. But those who are looking for true righteousness will see it. See, uh, it morally pure is what this is about. It's not just how you act. It is what is the motivation behind the action. You trying to get purity points with the pastor? Please, in this place, don't waste your time. I, and I'm nobody. I'm, 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 I'm just what he made me. I'm not. But I'm going to tell you something. That's why I tell people, please, just be you. Because when I talk to you, now I got to deal with this facade you're putting up. 
before we can really talk to you. Because, oh, yes, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I really want to get to what's real. And I'm looking at what's real. But I can't get to what's real because the person is too busy putting up this, this cinema, uh, you know, production. Just be you. Because God says, I know you. And I still love you. In spite of your wickedness, I love you. Isn't that something? I don't know of another deity, another Elohim. They don't operate that, that at all. You cross them, they cross you. Those sons of God that, that fell, oh yeah, and in and, and, and charge of, of Tyrus, in charge of Egypt, in charge of St. Louis, in charge of Memphis, in charge of Alabama, and in charge of Texas. Uh, these are people, in, these demons are in charge of these areas. Cross one of them. And they'll use all their spiritual power to wipe you off the face. Ask the, the, the poor entertainers who want to get out. Ask the politicians who want to get out. Think about that. Ask. Ask them how the Elohim treats them. See, Elohim, okay, sorry. Elohim is a position, not a name. It's, a, it's where you are. Elohim deals, they're the beings that are in the spiritual world. Ezekiel will teach you this. Satan is, is an Elohim. But we've been trained to say, oh, Elohim. You, you got to know something. It's a position. It's where they are. They're in a spiritual world. Right? God, our Father, is an Elohim, but every Elohim is not God. We all right? It slipped. Sorry. We're going to be all right. Have your ears open. See, what, what's, what's causing our problems, and we're going to close. What's keeping us from being truly holy is a selfish, faithless mindset. See, the evil world has taught us to look after number one. Who is number one? Ourselves. Look after yourself. Nobody cares about you. The world tells us that no one cares. Okay. But are we not supposed to be different than the world? Do you know that if we believe in the word of God, we would know that we are not alone? that we are indeed loved, that we are indeed watched over, and that we are guaranteed that he, we will be taken care of. If you are not faithless, you'll believe that. See, we are his children, y'all. Any parent wouldn't take care of their child? You saw your child out there struggling in the middle of the street homeless. What would you do? Just leave him homeless? Well, I don't know. I don't know how he got there. He might have deserved it. A okay, let me ask. Will a mother do that? And a father wouldn't either. A father would grab him, kick his tail all down the street, <laughs> told him, tell him why he got there, how he got there, and don't do that no more. Now, now get up. You know, that's, that's tough love, you know. We don't like tough love. But I want you to know something. God loves us more than we can understand. But if we let the enemy pull us away, we won't hear the promises of God. We won't be assured of the promises of God. We'll lose our hope, y'all. And when we lose our hope, we begin to be what? Sliding to the other side. We can't lose our hope, but we'll lose our hope when we break our connection, when we stop praying, when we stop asking, when we stop searching, when we stop looking. We're going to lose that connection because that your, your plug is always open. You're supposed to plug it in to the most high. 
But when it's just floating around, the devil has a whole power strip that he wants you to plug into. And one of them is going to look like the one that God has. And we'll plug right in there, won't we? In the name of the Lord. And what's sad about it, because we really would believe we're doing what God asked us to do. And we'll have power. We'll have miracles happening in us. We'll be doing things, and we'll be saying, God must be with me. All these things are falling into place. And the devil said, yeah, go ahead and believe that. Believe that the Most High is doing that, even though you're nowhere near him. James 4, I'm sorry, James 4. James 4. Have faith, people. See, we're supposed to live by the counsel of God. If that, that was the title of this thing, live by the counsel of God. And, and, and James chapter 4, starting at verse 5. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud. But he give what? Grace unto the humble. Then he goes on to tell us, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. And what? Why is the devil always with us then? Two things. You got to submit to God and then we got to resist. Help us. Then he goes on, draw nigh to God. And this is what's wonderful. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hearts. Uh Uh-oh, we don't do that. Cleanse your hearts, ye sinners. Are you okay with God calling you that? I guess I should ask, are you all right with me reading this? Now, see, if I came out and called you a sinner and I wasn't reading, y'all be doing this. Who you think you are? That's why I just read. I said, this is the word. He, but, he, he, but he says, look, don't worry about that. Clean, clean your heart. Let's go. He said, I don't want you to be that, and I don't want to accuse you, and I, 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 I don't want to, you to, to suffer. I want you to cleanse your heart, ye sinners, and I want you to pure, I mean, so cleanse your hands, and ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's the whole problem with us. We're double-minded. We're just, just so sweet, lukewarm. Well, we live in a day well, you're either going to be hot or cold. And the devil's going to demand you to be cold. Right. Demand you to be cold. There was an old, old time, a long time ago. I don't know if they should still do this, but if you wanted to play for the New York Yankees, you couldn't have facial hair. They demanded it. And, and everybody wanted to play for the Yankees. And they shaved as they were smooth as a baby. But when God has a standard, we want to go through a questionnaire. Well, God, why why, why, why I have to do that? You didn't ask George Steinbrenner why he asked you to do that. You just did it. Do you know that when you go to FedEx, you can't wear a UPS uniform? And no one questions that. But what about the Lord? He just simply asked you to be what he asked you to be. He said, resist the devil. Draw nigh to me. See, living in in his counsel will bring us up higher and higher. Having only one Lord in our lives will settle us in a time of uncertainty. When we really believe in the most high, in the times of uncertainty, we know he's got it covered we start to develop something called faith. And when you have faith in the small, when the big comes, you'll have faith in that too. Then he, he, let's go to Galatians 2 and we go home. Now we, we just stop this. Galatians chapter 2. See, we need, to be, we need to settle a little bit. See, being led by the Spirit of the Most High will supply us with the weapons that we need to overcome this evil one. And that one weapon is to leave, take the idol off the shelf. 
and let the Lord lead you. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. You know what that means? Well, yeah, Christ got crucified. He did it for me. I am crucified with Christ. That means I did what Christ did. I gave myself fully and wholly and eternally to my Father. Nevertheless, I'm still alive because it's a better way to live. He said, but, but Christ, not I, but Christ liveth at me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Do you know we live by the faith of Christ? We are alive because of the faith that Christ had. Christ believed in his Father. He believed, and no one can move him from that. He looked, when Satan was talking to him, he looked through the eyes of his Father's way. And he said, he could have said, yeah, I'll jump off the top of this thing and prove to you who I am. But the word says, what? You should not tempt the Lord thy God. The God is not a circus. The Jews tried to get Christ to be a circus animal. Well, do this and we'll believe you. He said, no, you won't. You didn't believe Moses. And you've been reading him since you were born. So we have to look through it. We got to live by the council. What does the council say? Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Fear God. Give him his reverence. He said, holy and reverent is his name. It's just follow the way. So can we live by the counsel? Can we let him be the almighty? And, and, and help us along the way. This is what this is all about. It's just help us along the way. Do you realize that eternity is this close? It's almost here. It's almost here. Is anybody happy or everybody afraid? Young people say, well, I didn't get a chance to live my life. Man, are you nuts? You about to really live a life when you get to, to the other side. You actually will know what living is. Living is not working 40 years and retiring and die of a stroke three years later. Living the way God has this thing is living with, what did he, what did he say in Revelation? No death, no sorrow, no tears, no pain. Cause, and he called them the former things. I passed away. There'll be nobody poking at you trying to get you to do something wrong. Because you have been with God so long that wrong don't even cross your mind. See, that's what heaven's about. It didn't cross your mind anymore. So let's, let's live by the council. Because we're living in troublous times. We're living in times where everybody's kind of off because they know good is evil and evil is good. And, and then they, they go on to say, I know the word of God says something, but I'm my own God right. and my own truth. And I want to do what I want to do to satisfy myself. You can't have 8 billion people with that attitude. You can't. In, in this city, you can't even drive down the street because everybody's out for themselves. On the highway, a man must have passed us going 120. I'm not talking about out there on I-40. I'm talking about 240. Foom, 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 foom. Barely missing people. No concern about anybody or anything but what they wanted to do. That spirit is real. Don't you think you need a spirit to protect you? And that's what we're going to do by living by his counsel. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we can only say thank you. Thank you for your way. Thank you for your love, your kindness. Lord, bring us home. Mm. We have strayed. 
we have gone in places and directions we shouldn't go, but your love is still there. We see you now standing at the gate, waiting on us to come home. Father, let us realize we've been deceived, we've been duped, and we need to come on back home. But we have to follow your counsel. We have to walk in the way you told us to, and there's such great reward in doing so. Father, help us to believe that so we can start on this path back to your righteousness. Lord, there's nothing out here in this world that means anything but souls that need to find you. So help us to be an instrument in your hand that those souls can be helped by us. Thank you again, Lord, for that privilege. In the name of Christ, we ask all things. Amen. All right, I know. Too long. I always think about, it comes from being a young minister. When you're a young minister, you always think you're going to run out of stuff to say. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's your brother Tony. Let's go ahead and get started with memory verses. Who's first? All right, come on. Oh. Who won't? Who won't? Who won't? Right. Happy Sabbath. My name is Javier. This is my memory verse. Isaiah 41, 14. Fear not thou, fear not thou, warn Jacob. Fear not thou, warn Jacob. And ye, ye, ye men of Israel, I will help thee in, in thy re redemption. of the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Who's next? Happy Sabbath, my name is Jason, this is my neighbors. Proverbs 18, 9. The Lord is on my side, I the Lord's on my side. I will not fear that man can do unto me. Amen. Come on. Let's go. Test it number three. Happy Sabbath. My name is Ozada, and this is my memory verse. Isaac. Huh? I uh, Isaiah. Uh, fourteen, thirteen. For I, the Lord thy God, hold thy right hand, right, and saying, singing unto the these. Uh, Yes. She's coming right back. <clears throat> Come on up. Happy Sabbath. My name is Julia, and this is my May verse. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Jeremiah 17, 
seven. Happy Sabbath, my name is Jaden, and my memory verse is, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open. Matthew 7, 7. Redemption. Happy Sabbath, my name is Lazada, and this is my movie verse. Isaiah fourteen thirteen, for the Lord thy God, thy God, the Lord thy God, God. Isaiah fourteen thirteen. Here we go. Thou hast said, for thou, I has said, and thy heart I will ascend. Ascend. Ascend into heaven. heaven. I, I will, will have my throne. Door above the star of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, the side of the north. Amen. That's a deep. That's a deep. Yeah, I mean, I just got to think about that. Woo. All right, how about any uh, testimony? No, I'm sorry. Maybe any memory verses online. Do we have? I don't think so either. I got to ask. You know, you know. Yeah, I'm going to ask. 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 Yeah, i I just want to say to the children that enjoyed their memory verses, um, some of them were kind of long, but I'm proud of them. They got through them. Just want to thank God for the Sabbath, thank God for the Word. I know Pastor Shaw was saying it's long, but it wasn't long to me. It could have went on a little longer. <laughs> I was enjoying it. <laughs> so I just want to say happy Sabbath to everyone. And remember all the sunshine outside, that there'll be sunshine in our hearts today. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Any other testimonies? Whoa. No more testimonies online? Or once? Twice? How about testimonies here in Memphis? Hello, Sabbath family. Just want to thank God for being here on today. Uh, didn't didn't uh, didn't know I was gonna be in here. Um, my company lost a contract with uh, with their Memphis load, so I'm I've been all over the place lately. But uh, finally made it back to Memphis. I was like, I'm going to church today. So uh, just thank God for that. Thank God for His traveling mercies. Thank God for His many blessings. Uh, his, his, he's teaching us and He's growing us, and it, it's been a journey. Um, uh, just, I'm just thanking God for the for the lesson on today too. I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I, it was, it was actually a time where I enjoyed, you know, living my best life or whatever. And it's now, it's like now when I just talk to my my brothers or I talk to my wife, it's like, man, we just wait until the Lord come back because it's, <laughs> it's just crazy out here. But we we just thank God for God. Uh, happy Sabbath, to everybody. <laughs> Good morning, this is Samuel McClinton. I too want to just thank God for Traveling Mercies. I went to um, 
Atlanta Thursday and Friday, kind of drove all the way out there. And I just, God bless me to drive all the way out there and back and come back last night and here today. Because I didn't think I was going to be here too. But I definitely uh, was uh, just thankful for that and the travel and all that. I just think God God is, God is so good and so kind. You know, we got a lot of things going on in this world, man. A lot of stuff making like, hey, maybe want to sit down and just, you know. But God's been good, and we got to be that light. Thank God for the word today. It's just positive. It's always new. It's always refreshed. It's always got me, like, motivated. I just thank God. Have a Sabbath. I think that's we're finished. Oh, nope. It's not fast. We got one more. I'm sad, Brother Steve. <laughs> I'm sad, Brother Steve. Uh, as everyone else, I want to thank uh, the Lord for being in the house today. Um, missed last week. Um, man, but I do want to thank him. I went to see the man in the white coat uh, last week. And so I always want to give uh, God uh, his praise and um, his glory for um, everything he does, you know. And so um, got some, got a good report. Let's just say that. Got a good report. And I just want to always acknowledge him uh, publicly for what he does for me. Um, just thank him. And we were uh, in listening to uh, that tail end of the uh, sermon. I, I, I've been, I'm just thankful to God that um, my son, he's just, uh, his, his, he, he's always been uh, uh, in the church. You know, from me, his mom, his, and especially his grandma, traveling back and forth to church, uh, New Salem over there. Um, but he's even more heavy now into church. And uh, just the conversation that him and I had yesterday uh, was just eye-opening and revealing. Uh, you know, some of the stuff that he talks about and the things that he said, it's just a joy to be able to have a, a, conversation, a conversation with him that was strictly about the word, you know, strictly about the word yesterday, not anything else. And, and of course, you know, he, he wants to feel like he's schooling me, you know, so pops, did you know, but you also know, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, you sound like a, a lot of the fellas at church, you know, so okay, yeah, it's good. And then I said, uh, no, we're we going to think about, you know, uh, uh, you know, Sabbath and what, what you think about that? And of course he had, you know, some things to say about that. So, you know, so we're still talking. Let's <laughs> just say that. So I just thank God just for that and, and you know, what he's doing in his life um, and uh, the revelations that he can, uh, continues to reveal. God is a good God. He's just a good God, and I'm just ever thankful for all that he does. So have a set. Happy Sabbath, this Brother Nelson. I wasn't going to say no, but I thought about something that happened this week. Um, so, I uh, was trying to figure out the best way to explain this. So, uh, I call, I, you know, you know, movies come out all the time, right? And there was a so-called movie for children that came out. But then I've been hearing some things about it that it ain't really made for children. So, I decided to call somebody that I thought had enough sense to tell me whether or not a movie, you know, was right from wrong. Well, anyways, long story short... Uh, a conversation that was just a simple, hey, I know you went to go see this movie, I'm hearing some things about it, you think it's appropriate for my children? Ended up with, you know, almost a borderline argument of, you know, well, I don't want to tell you, yeah, you can take them, then you don't want to see them. I said, but don't you got enough sense to know when something, well, yeah, I wasn't watching it like that. So, so you can't tell me if this is something, and this is somebody that's way older than I am, so I, can't, I respected them, so I thought they had enough sense to tell me there's something. Long story short, it's just, it kind of hurt my feelings a little bit because I recognize we're living in a world where people can't see evil no more, you know. And I was basically saying, they was like, well, we, we don't see no wrong. I said, well, you're adults. I would think, you know, you kind of, your filter is kind of damaged a little bit because you're so used to seeing so much stuff. But children, they'll see something, they remember it. And they'll talk about it, and they'll question that. So I'm cautious, right? And it just kind of hurt my feelings a little bit because this, this person I respect and I thought, again, they had enough sense. You know, we talk about God. I thought they had enough sense to know when something probably shouldn't be appropriate. And I'm at a point now where I recognize my children can't go over everyone's home. Because if, if, if you don't have enough sense to know that something wasn't for children, then I can't let my children go over there because obviously your guard's not up. 
And it just kind of hurt my feelings because I'm kind of starting to see this constant pattern across the world that a lot of people's guards are going down. I said, what's wrong with that? Uh, uh, you, you're just thinking too hard. But I'm like, children got enough sense to know when something's wrong. You don't got enough sense? And so I, I can't be explicit of what it is, uh, but just trust me, it was something that I, I recognized that is out of the order of God that a child shouldn't see. And it just, like I said, it just hurt my feelings because I, I believe we're in that time now where good is, is considered evil and evil is considered good. And where people are, their defenses are so down that they can't see when the enemies, because the, the part about it is the enemy used to hide. He used to try to find a subliminally way to show it to you. It's just straightforward now. It's not even a question on if it's right or wrong. It's just, yeah, we know what that is. It's just, it's just getting hard now. So I just kind of say that to encourage you all to just be mindful of your children, what they see, who they go around, because everyone's not as protected as you are. Everyone's not trying to protect the character of your people, as you may be. And uh, just, and sometimes it's your own family. It just is what it is. So, heavy set. <laughs> The world has lost its mind. We just have to keep up. And that's nothing new. There were people's houses we couldn't go to. We were growing up. And we thought that was so mean. Because they looked like they were having so much fun. But he said, no, because they don't, I remember some of, they don't know how to go home. Even when I was a teenager, they don't know how to go home. Dad said, no, no, you can't go with them. Oh, you know, especially somebody from school, because you're going to see them all next week, and you're going to get talked about. But parents, say no. Be prayerful. You will live. The children will live. They really will. They'll be mad at you for about an hour, but they'll be all right. So, all right. Anyone else? Have a set with everybody. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this as brief as humanly possible. Um, I'm still very tired and jet lagged, sadly. It's been weeks. But I just want to thank uh, everyone for the prayers of Traveling Mercies. Uh, me standing here is proof that I made it back from a European tour uh, and didn't like die or anything. Uh, it was really, I'm very thankful and feel very blessed to have had that opportunity and experience. And I'm just constantly amazed by how far God has taken me in a very short amount of time. Uh, and uh, I'm just appreciative of it. I feel like being in Europe for five weeks is a very interesting experience. Uh, a lot of culture shocks. Uh, but I feel like I'm just thankful that I was able to adjust this. God, I, maybe, maybe ugh, words. Uh, God was able to like make me adjust as, as I needed to be and made everything like insanely easy and chill and like, which is kind of funny, because like you know it shouldn't have gone that as well as it did. Like nothing bad happened other than like. Like, our car got broke, well, attempted break-in in, like, Paris, but, like, nothing was stolen, and all day was shatter a window and became, like, a massive inconvenience for, like, a week. But, like, nothing bad happened, and I feel like so many bad things could have happened. I feel like God had his, his hand on us, like, the entire time we were there, and I'm just, like, extremely thankful for it. Uh, and I just continue for, I just want to ask for continued prayer over me and my like found family and my you know actual family and stuff i feel like uh it's been weird adjusting being back and it's put me in a strange headspace being back in the states because it's like we're having like a high of a high of being in like europe as like a quote unquote like rock star like signing autographs and stuff and then coming home and kind of going back into the same like mundane routine that i haven't been enjoying lately is uh been rough and I just asked for prayer to get through that. And uh, also, I randomly got this, like, I can't talk about it because it's not, like, a f announced or anything or official. But I got asked to do this, to put my name in the hat for this, like, really, really insanely, insane opportunity that seems like, hilariously random. And, like, I shouldn't have gotten this, but I did. And I just would like everyone to pray that I either get this or get out of it what God wants me to get out of it. Because if I get it, it would be really cool. But if I don't get it, I would like to learn what I was supposed to learn from the tryout process of it. And uh, thankful I get to see my daughter. Thankful for her continuing to grow and like be healthy and stuff. Thankful for my girlfriend. And I'm thankful for all of you amazing people. And uh, yeah, I think that was a really quick summary of everything. I hope so. 
I'm also extremely scatterbrained because I'm so tired. Um, happy Sabbath. Good to have you back. Good to have a, a granddaughter in the house. See, y'all got a lot of grand people. I don't. I got one. So I appreciate it. And we thank God. Anyone else? I thought Lawrence ran out. I didn't know if he was going to say something. <laughs> well, we thank God for the day. And I need y'all to understand something. God is real and he is good. And we got to be all right with that. And how he operates is how he operates. And it's a great life. You don't know how wonderful life is until you almost lose it. And I think you all ought to appreciate every day of your life. And don't sweat the small stuff. Let the Lord handle it all. And we'll live a, a longer life, a more joyous life, and use the wisdom that God gives you to do that. I just, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, laying on operating tables will give you a different perspective. And I don't stress about things like I used to. Um, you know, I, I get to the point, Isaiah, I said, well, uh, I was talking to a brother the other day and said, you might say something to somebody, but they not, might not be ready to hear it. And when God is allowing them to hear it, they'll hear it. And I used to get frustrated by that. For years, I would teach and teach and teach. And to the same people. And it's like I was just singing a very lovely song, as the Bible says. But yet, one day, they'll catch it. So I'm like that now. If you catch it now, that's on you. If you catch it later, it's fine. But I'm not going to stress out about it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to stay up and cry for y'all like that anymore. Uh, but I do stay up and cry for y'all for other stuff. But not that. Uh, I worry about you all in this sense, that you've been given a great gift, the oracles of God. What are we doing with it? And if you, if you keep playing with it, you'll stop desiring it. And then what? You become a Babylonian. And we don't have 400 years to get out of Egypt, do we? I do worry about that. So I ask you to do something. If you care about me, some, some of y'all do, some of y'all don't. If you care about me, then just do what God says to do. That gives me longevity. That gives me sleep at night. But you know how you get them 3 o'clock nudges? Hey, you need to get them pray for somebody. <laughs> what are they doing now? <laughs> do what he says. Stop questioning it. Just do it. And you'll enjoy a life in a way you've never enjoyed it before. We thank God for my wife, uh, my sons, my daughter-in-laws, and, and all those great things that come with having a family. Uh, and I said I thank God for my little gift, my granddaughter, who has taught me a whole different world. I didn't know about that world. And my father gave a study one night. I'm going to let you go in a minute. He gave a study one night. He said, you, are, you have sons, then you have fathers, then you have grandfathers. Those are three different categories that lessons can only be learned if you're one of them. You can be a son. I learned how to be a great son. I was a good son. Then I became a father. Ah, did I? And now I'm a grandfather. It's a whole different set of lessons. Because you have a child that you just can't shove all you want to shove into them because you don't have them. They're not yours. And you're like, and then you, you end up doing what most grandparents do. Ah, I die. What you want, baby? You can get anything you want to. Now, my sons will tell you that was not their reality. But with grandchildren, you softened your heart. So I just thank God for that lesson. And uh, we ask that you all would pray for the church uh, as we are trying to make it. Uh, 
You all know that things are not free. Uh, the man wants his money. And uh, we just got to keep that in mind. And it's not necessarily coming out of your pocket. Just pray because God can open doors. He's the cattle on a thousand hills is his. So prayer is most important. And that's what we're asking for. I'm not asking for donation. I'm asking for prayer because God will open the window for you. And so we just need God to open some windows. Amen. Amen. Hey, well, hey, it's hot outside. Therefore, fellowship dinner is a summertime dish. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll see in just a moment. But it's a summertime dish. I think everybody will enjoy it. And uh, please stay if you can and uh, uh, partake in it. Talk to each other. Have fun with each other. There's nothing wrong with godly fun. Now, our conversations need to be tightened up a little bit. Uh, we tend to, to, because we don't see each other, we tend to talk about things that we've been wanting to talk to people about all week. But we kind of let, let God have his day. And we, it's enough to talk about, isn't it? Uh, it Staying in the parameters of God. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Well, let's keep that in mind. And also, after benediction, remember, uh, everybody, we, we pay rent on that side of the building, too. So let us all go to that side of the building because some people like to sit and pray and meditate. And, and this, is, this is where we meet the Lord. Isn't there something special about that? And so let's treat it that way. All right? Anything else for the good of the body? Well, let's have a word of prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we bow again, thanking you, Lord, for your mercies, your grace. We thank you for the children's memory verses. We thank you for the testimonies, because once again, it proves to us that you move in the lives of your people. So, Father, help us to learn the lessons we need to learn through the experiences that you allow to happen to us. And, Father, the things that we have heard even today, that they would be part of our lives, that our lives would be adjusted accordingly, that we would always have our ears open to hear, thus saith the Lord. Forgive us for our sins and forgive us for our selfishness. And, Lord, we know we don't know everything, but you do. So we come to you. Lord, in time of need. Thank you again for the privilege. And in the name of Christ, we ask all things. Amen. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen.